Rebellion Beer Company started in 1993. Uh, a friend of mine, Tim Coombs, and I went to uh, school in Marlow and watched the old brewery shut down in uh, the Weatheridge Brewery in the centre of Marlow. And we decided to uh, start Marlow's brewing tradition again, um, which had dated back over 250 years. So um, we set up in 1993. Um, the original idea was we wanted to go back onto the old brewery site in the centre of town um, and that wasn't possible so we set up here at Bankham Farm um, and we've been growing fairly steadily ever since. One of the byproducts of the brewing process is the uh, spent grains once we've extracted all the, the, the sugar and the colour and the flavour from the malted barley. What's left is the protein rich husk and it always goes off and feeds local cows um, and the farmer here we got to know because we were starting to give him the spent grains and it's a, it's a lovely tie in, it's a nice position for us to be on a farm because obviously all the, the byproducts can be reused somewhere on the farm um, so uh, it's a, just a very nice tradition, you know what a use of a redundant farm buildings is to put a is a, put a small brewery in. In the early days we were brewing something like 5,000 pints a week. Um, we've grown pretty steadily over the last X number of years to the point where we're now something between 30 and 35,000 pints a week. And that's really the size that we want to remain at really. Um, it's the <coughs> ideal size for a, a small brewery that's looking really predominantly to focusing on selling to their local, um, the local beer drinkers. The start of the process is that we use um, malted barley as the source of um, sugar which the yeast will convert into alcohol. Um, we buy in our malted barley um, and the first start stage of the process is blend the different malted barleys to give the colour and the flavour we're looking for from the malt. Um, we use about three quarters of a tonne of malt blended with something like 1,600 litres of hot liquor, which is what brewers call water, um, and this is what we call the mash. It's effectively a two and a half tonne porridge, um, and what's happening there is the starch is breaking down into sugars, which the yeast then can convert into alcohol. We extract the, um, the liquid uh, from the, the grains, and this is called the, the wort, um, and this is the the liquid that's got the sugar, the colour and the flavour extracted from the malted barley. This then goes to a tank which was traditionally called a copper um, and we boil the, the extract up for about an hour and a half and this is where we add the, the hops. Um, hops were traditionally added because they, f they found brewers of the Middle Ages found that it actually preserved the beer because traditionally we used to drink beer very much like we drink water today because it was a lot safer. The alcohol in the beer actually killed off any bugs and bacteria that were harmful to you. So we used to drink beer very much as the drink of the day, but it used to turn into vinegar very, very quickly. Um, but brewers found that they added all sorts of fruits and berries and herbs and honey, which um, sort of made mead. But an enterprising brewer found that by adding hops, not only did it give it flavour and aroma, but it also helped preserve the beer. It stopped it turning into vinegar quite so quickly. So hops now become an integral part of the flavour and the aroma, but they also serve a uh, sort of a... Because we don't artificially preserve the beer in any other way. Um, the natural preservative from the hops actually is the only thing that we use. The next part of the process is the fermentation. So it takes us about seven hours through the brew house to get the extract, boil it up with the hops. It then gets cooled down to 21 degrees, and that's the ideal temperature to add the yeast, uh, and at that point fermentation starts. Um, fermentation is just simply the, 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 the yeast eats the sugar and it produces alcohol and carbon dioxide. Um, we monitor the, the sugar level as it falls during fermentation, and at a certain point we'll stop the fermentation by chilling it down. Because what we're looking to do is once we transfer the beer into cask, the cask condition is actually the final fermentation and it takes place in the cask, in the beer store. Um, and that final fermentation only accounts for about 5% of the sugar, the total amount of sugar that's fermented. But it produces a disproportionate amount of the flavour um, that's in the beer and that's produced in the cask 
and it's trapped there all the, to the point where it gets served in the pub or wherever. Um, the thing is with real ale is that we don't filter it, we don't pasteurise it, there's no preservatives in it because it's a living product. The yeast are carrying on working, producing flavour, producing carbon dioxide, producing alcohol, all to the point where it's served to the customer. So it's a very natural product. It needs to be consumed pretty quickly. So the process really starts, um, say we brew on a Wednesday, we'll put that beer into cask the following Wednesday. We'd ideally like to keep it in the beer store for another seven days, about 10 degrees, to allow that final fermentation to take place. Um, and then we'll be selling it the following Wednesday. So from start to finish, it's about two weeks. And then as, it's a bit like selling fresh milk. As soon as that beer is out in the pubs being sold and consumed, the better. We currently are bottling probably about 10% um, of what we brew. The rest, um, the other 90%, goes into cask as cask conditioned beer. Um, the bottling we now do ourselves, so we are totally self-sufficient in, uh, in our operation here. Traditionally, we got another brewery to bottle beers for us. Um, the mix of beers, we've got four different bottled beers. Um, we have a blonde, which is a light ale style beer. Um, red, which is a traditional bitter. Then we've got Rebellion White, which is a Belgian style wheat beer. And then we've also got a beer called Rebellion Pilsner, which is a traditional Czech style lager beer. I've always said that I would really like everyone, when they go around the country, they will find a story like Rebellion. There are over 400 microbreweries now dotted around the country. And the beauty of a microbrewery like Rebellion is that we produce the beer locally. It's all produced traditionally. And there's the old adage that real ale and beer doesn't travel. And the closer to the brewery that you taste the beer, the better it will be. Um, and the beauty of Rebellion is that we sell nearly all our beer within a few miles radius of, of, of Marlow. Um, we produce the beer in the traditional way, with no preservatives, um, and it's it's good. <laughs>